Male circumcision is the surgical removal of the foreskin, which is the roll of skin that covers the end of the penis. In this video, we're going to cover how the foreskin develops, medical reasons for having a circumcision, and what actually happens during the procedure, as well as potential risks and recovery tips. However, I won't be covering cultural or religious reasons for circumcision in this video. So first of all, how does the foreskin develop? Well, it's normal for a baby boy's foreskin not to pull back or retract the first few years of life. But around the age of three, or later in some cases, the foreskin should start to separate naturally from the head of the penis, which is medically called the glands. Now, most boys' foreskins don't pull back before the age of five, but sometimes it's not possible until they're 10 or older. For some boys, the foreskin can take longer to separate, but this doesn't mean there's a problem and it will usually just detach at a later stage. Now, what I really want to stress is that you should never try to force your son's foreskin back because it may be painful and damage the foreskin. Just let it happen naturally, and if you're ever concerned, just visit your child's doctor. Now, to be honest, it's quite rare for circumcision to be recommended for medical reasons in boys. This is because other less invasive and less risky treatments are usually available, but some conditions can affect the penis, and in rare cases, these might require a circumcision. Now, the first of these is a condition causing a tight foreskin called thermosis. Basically, this is where the foreskin is too tight to be pulled back over the head of the penis. Now, this can sometimes cause pain when the penis is erect, and in rare cases, passing urine might be difficult. The second is if the boy has a recurrent infection called balanitis, where the foreskin and the head of the penis become inflamed and infected, which can cause them to look swollen, in some cases, and red. Now, normally balanitis typically settles down over time with some medicated cream and things like a low-dose steroid cream and good hygiene around the penis area. But if the balanitis keeps on coming back, so you call it recurrent balanitis, your doctor might suggest circumcision as one option to treat it. Now, the third condition is called paraphimosis, where the foreskin can't be returned to its original position after being pulled back, causing the head of the penis to become swollen and painful. Now, immediate treatment is needed of paraphimosis to avoid serious complications, such as restricted blood flow to the penis. Finally, there's a condition called balanitis serotica obliterans that can cause a tight foreskin and in some cases also affect the head of the penis, which can become scarred and inflamed. So this is the fourth reason for medical circumcision. So what does circumcision actually involve? Well, it's usually carried out on a day patient basis. This means that your child will be admitted to the hospital on the same day that he has surgery and won't need to stay overnight. He won't be able to eat or drink before having surgery because he's going to be asleep for this and you'll receive detailed information about this in a letter or an information pack before the operation. Now, if you don't receive this information, make sure you speak to the team caring for him so you know what to expect. Now, after being admitted to the hospital, your child will be seen by the surgeon who will carry out the procedure. They're going to explain the operation in more detail, discuss any concerns you might have, and answer any questions. They should also ask you to sign a consent form, giving your permission for the operation to go ahead. Now, when they're doing this, they should run through any potential risks or complications to make sure that you fully understand the procedure. Again, if they don't, or if there are any questions that you have or you're uncertain of, don't be afraid to ask them to clarify. Next, the anaesthetist, who is the doctor who helps put your child to sleep for the operation and monitor them during the operation, and often afterwards, will also visit your child before the operation. Now, your child will usually have a general anaesthetic, meaning that he's going to be asleep throughout the procedure and unable to feel any pain or discomfort. Now, generally speaking, circumcision is a relatively simple procedure. The foreskin is removed just behind the head of the penis using a scalpel or surgical scissors. Any bleeding can be stopped using heat, which is medically known as being cauterized. The remaining edges of skin are stitched together using dissolvable stitches, and it'll take up to six weeks for your son's penis to fully heal. Now, in terms of recovery, after the operation, a dressing will be put over the penis to protect the wound. It may be removed before your child goes home, or it may be left. If it's left, it should fall off itself within 24 hours. He'll be allowed home after he's passed urine, which might be uncomfortable at first, but this is normal. Now, it's important to be aware that the penis will be sore and inflamed 
for a few days after the operation and a medicated ointment might be prescribed to use for a few days to help the area to heal. Your child will also need regular pain relief, so things like paracetamol and ibuprofen, for at least three days. They can take these medicines following the instructions on the packet or the instructions that your health provider has given you. Now, in terms of baths, your child should be able to have a bath the day after their operation. Again, it's worth checking with their operating team if this is the case, but they should avoid riding a bicycle or other toys they sit on until any swelling has gone down. Now, it may be more comfortable to wear loose clothing or no clothing at all on his bottom half for a few days after the operation. Passing urine while in the bath or shower may also be more comfortable. You should be able to return to school or nursery about a week after the operation but make sure that you tell the school or the nursery about the operation so they're aware of it. Now, in most cases, a follow-up appointment isn't necessary. However, it's really important that you contact your doctor or your hospital care team if any of the following things are happening. So first, your child's penis is bleeding. Secondly, your child's penis is still swollen two weeks after the operation. If the child's passing urine is still painful a few days after the operation, all of these things are reasons to contact your doctor. Most of the time, they'll settle down by themselves, but it's worth being safe. Now, like any procedure, there are some risks you should be aware of, but the risks associated with circumcisions when carried out by qualified and experienced doctors are small. So the first main risk is bleeding, both during as well as after the operation. The surgeon is going to seal off any bleeding during the procedure, and the dressing that is applied afterwards, which we spoke about, will absorb any further bleeding. However, like I mentioned, seek medical advice if your child's penis continues to bleed after they return home. Other possible complications can include pain, infection of the wound, as well as scarring. But obviously, the surgeon and the operating team are going to do all they can to minimise these, but sometimes it's just not possible.